Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about uh, good code, writing good code, and how just a few lines of code can make a, a load of difference on how your program runs. And uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because people argue over which programming language is the best and why you shouldn't use such and such program or such and such programming language. And, and yet, you know, I have my opinions on different programming languages, but I have a personal feeling that for the most part, when it comes to writing efficient code, it's more important to be a good programmer than wondering what programming language is the best because you can take the absolute fastest and best programming language in the world and if you write it, your code poorly, it will run horribly. And you could also take a very slow language, but if you write your code efficiently, your program can run better. And yeah, if you got the best, the fastest programming language and you type the most efficient, it's going to be the, the most efficient. But my point is here is how you can just do improvement. And in fact, the code I'm going to show you here could definitely be improved some, but it's just basic examples to show you the difference. So right here I have in Blender, I have a 3D model of a Sherman tank. I think it said it was a Sherman tank in the model. Anyway, uh, it, it's a tank. And uh, we are going to uh, load that into a program that I wrote uh, in JavaScript using HTML5 and 3JS. And a lot of people are like, oh no, writing programs in HTML and JavaScript, it's horrible, and blah, blah, blah. And, and maybe you're right. You know what? Maybe you're right. But I'm going to show you how just a little bit of changes, again, can make a huge difference. So here's the model in Blender. Let me go over here. This is the project. You can actually download everything I'm going to show you today in one, one file. It's, it's um, you know, not the smallest uh, project in the world because I purposely loaded some big things in there. Uh, but you can clone that. And then you can also go to my website to, to run the code. I'll try to remember to put links in the description of the video. Uh, but basically, you would go to filmsidechris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2020 and then look for the project called 3D Models Loading Example Master. So you can get that there. And so this is it running on my web server, which is running through um, Vulture and uh, Vulture services over in Miami. And I also have the same exact files running on my local machine, just to show you the differences here. Uh, because one of the issues that people will complain about with like HTML uh, programs is, oh, well, loading times because it has to download everything. Well, you can cache everything. I didn't write this program to cache anything, but I can run it locally, which speeds things up dramatically. Um, but any program you run either has to be downloaded or loaded to your computer on, at some point. So even though we might be working with large files here, you could write the code to cache locally and that way it doesn't have to download. We're looking at loading time here primarily, but also uh, download time. So real quick, I have three examples here. I have Tank 10, which loads 10 of those tank models, Tank 100, which actually loads 101 of those tank models, and then Tank Empty that uses empties, which you'll see why we do that in a moment. So let me go ahead and load this from my web server, my Films by Chris server. Again, I'm in Naples, this is in Miami, so it's the other side of Florida. Um, and my internet speed will vary greatly on this, but I have my network tab open here, so you can see as it's downloading and how long it takes. So I'll click on Tank 10. And you can see here it loads a scene. I can move, the, scene, the scene's working, uh, but the tanks haven't loaded yet. If we look down here, they're still loading. Uh, and the file is like 280 some megabytes to load 10 of those tanks, which is gonna take, about 45, 50 seconds to download from the web server. Again, I could have this after loading once cache locally, uh, but I did not write the program to do this. And that's something else that you could do to, in speed, uh, to increase your, or I guess lower your time, increase your speed, lower your time. It's still loading, it seems loading. And normally if you're gonna have something load large like this, you would have a load screen so people know stuff is loading. I didn't do that here, uh, but we can see it's almost done loading a little bit more. We're at 40 seconds and 41 seconds, it's done downloading, and now I would count, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 seconds for those models to load after being downloaded. So it's not even the download time, it's the loading time is what we're looking at here too. Uh, and we got those 10 models. So we're looking again, 45 seconds to a minute with halfway decent internet speed uh, on my machine to load. 10 of those models. Let's go ahead and run that uh, from a web server locally. We'll go 10, and again, you can see here it downloads the model. It only took about a second to load that, but we're gonna look at how long it takes. Once those models are downloaded, it's still, they're still not here. The scene's frozen because it's loading those 10 models. 
they're still loading. There we go. Once they're loaded, it runs fine, right? Because we're using WebGL, which is the same as OpenGL, to render stuff. So once it's loaded, it's, it's, it's rendering uh, using my GPU and everything. And if I hit Control-Shift-R, that will refresh it and make sure it doesn't use any cache files. We will see this again. Again, it takes about a second to load. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about 12 seconds to load after the one second of downloading it from the local machine. Again, on the first example, I'm downloading from a remote server, so it took 45 seconds to download that uh, 281 megabytes of files. Um, so we're looking at loading this locally, best case scenario you know, is gonna be 10 to 15 seconds. Let's go back to my remote web server, go back to the directory here. Now we're gonna load, again, there's actually 101 tanks in this scene. Let's see how long it takes to load from the server on the other side of the state. One, two, three, four, five. So it took five seconds. It took four seconds to download only 28 megabytes. Four seconds to do that and less than a second for it to, to load them. Now, I didn't lower the poly count. These are the same exact tanks. Same exact tanks loading from a remote server, not cached. Again, I'll hit Control Shift R to show you to refresh it. Again, it's downloading. It's downloading the files. It took 2.87 seconds that time. And again, about a second for it to load 101 of these tanks. Same exact tanks. I haven't lowered the quality of the models at all. How am I doing this? And why is it only 280, or sorry, 28 uh, megabytes rather than 280 megabytes? And it's, it's, 10 times what we were loading before. Um, I'm not compressing the models at all. I just wrote the code different. And again, that was remote server. Let's see how long it takes to load that from the local machine. 101 tanks, boom. I mean, we'll refresh that again. One, two, two seconds to load 101 of the same exact tanks. Well, let's go ahead and look at the code. So I have the project here. We will first look at tanks10.html and uh, we got some JavaScript in here. And if we look up here, uh, most of this is just basic loading the scene stuff, but then here we're loading the model. I'm calling this function that I wrote load DAE file, which is the type of model that we're loading here. And we're loading model tank10.dae. Uh, Again, that's 280 some megabytes. We come down here, what we do, well, we create a variable called model, then we uh, just basically load that model and add it to the scene. That's pretty much all we're doing here. So we're downloading 288 megabytes worth of files, worth of model, and loading it. And that's only 10 models at that size. Let's exit out of this and look at the difference uh, in tank 100.html. Again, we load it in the in the main function up there. The color coding is uh, a little messed up here, whatever. Um, but let's look here. We load the scene just like before. All that's the same. Well now, instead, but instead of loading 10 tanks, this is only loading one tank, which is why it's one tenth the size. I find that tank model, this is one way of doing it, there's better ways of doing it, and, but I'm creating uh, a tank object. Uh, I'm setting its position. I don't. I shouldn't. I don't need to do that. I was trying to move it off to the side. It's still buried in all those tanks. But I, I move it. Then we just do this. This is basically what I added here. After finding the tank model, I'm looping ten times and looping ten times again. I'm taking that tank and I'm cloning it, and then moving its position x and z relative to its number. So basically, we're we're taking what we're doing here is we're loading one model. And instead of loading 100 models or 101 models, we're loading one and we're saying, instead of load it, just generate new ones, generate new ones. So we don't have to load all those models up into RAM and then render them out to the screen. We're just saying create. And in some cases, example here, sometimes it's faster to create something than it is to load something. So instead of loading 100 models, we're creating them. We're loading one and then copying it over a number of times, and the way we're doing that is basically this for loop. Again, this is just repositioning the original tank. So we, the only thing we've added is we found the original tank, and then we loop through it and load a hundred more of them to the scene. Now that's great. 
And also I wanted to go back to Blender to also show you, I was talking about how in the web browser it took 10 to 15 seconds for it to load those 10 tanks. Let's go ahead and load a new scene here and delete the default cube, whoops, delete the default cube. And I'm gonna import that same exact file. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna to go to my models and I'm gonna load those 10 tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it took six, six or seven seconds is what I normally count when I test this out. So it is faster than in the web browser by, you know, about half. We got seven seconds rather than 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, it's usually about 12 seconds. So yeah, about half uh, in Blender than it is in the web browser. So yeah, Blender's loading things better than the web browser is. But doing it the proper way where we're generating them rather than loading them all is still faster than that. Now, <clears throat> one of those issues is I very easily put, the, and put them in there and loop through them and made 10 rows of 10. What if you're designing a game and you want these tanks in certain places on a hill or a box and you want them rotated a certain way? Well, you still can do something similar with just a few lines of code. And I'll show you my code, but my, show, my code on this could probably be cut in half if I spent a little more time on it. I'm going to load this. Uh, and all these files, again, are in the project on GitLab. We got tank empty dot blend, don't save that. And I, in this scene, I have one of the tanks and I have a bunch of empties. Empties are just points, they're just positions and rotations. And you can see that some of them are higher. I put them all in different positions and different rotations. Uh, so basically, if I go back to my web browser here and I can go to this again, this is my remote server here. I can click, click on tank empty, one, two, three, four, and there are about four seconds for it to download and load all these tanks based on those empty positions. And if I do it on the local machine, one, two, there we go, we got two seconds to load those. And yeah, there's not a hundred here, but again, cloning them like that takes almost no time at all. So I could have a hundred of these empties and it would increase the size of the file very much. So there's not as much, uh, not a hundred to load a hundred tanks, but a hundred empties are nothing. So you can use empties in your project. And normally you would have, here I have the tank and the empties in one file. Normally you would have one file containing all your assets. So you would load all your assets, your soldiers, your trees, your buildings that you're gonna use. And then you'll have another file that's basically your map that has all the empties in it. And I'll show you the code right now for this to explain a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to vim tanks empty. So again, I have my DAE file here. It's loading. Now, last time we just looped through uh, some numbers to give us 10 rows of 10. This time what I'm doing is I'm creating an array called empties. And then I'm gonna loop through each child, each object, each element that was just loaded from that scene, that DAE file that we loaded. <clears throat> I'm going to look at each one put in an object, I'm gonna get its name. And if its name includes tank, well then I'm gonna make that my tank object. If it includes empty, I'm going to push that to the empties. So if you were to have different models, you might have instead of empties, you would have tanks, or, and you would have trees, or whatever you're going to label them as. Once we have this array completed, we loop through that array, and I'm gonna say, okay, get the first empty, get its position X, Y, Z, get its rotation X, Y, Z, then clone the tank just like we did before, set its position to X, Y, Z, and its rotation X, Y, Z, based on the empty and add it to the scene. And again, I should, I wrote this like this, where I did position X, Y, and Z, getting each of the empties position and rotation. Uh, in reality, I could have cut out half these lines just by saying uh, T, position X equals empty position X. So I could have cut that in half. And in real, reality, I should be able to just get the position in one line and add it to the position of T. So really I have, how many lines of code do I have here? Uh, about 15 lines of code. This could probably be done in five lines of code if I was to write it better. Um, I don't think that would improve the speed too much, but it would clean up the code some. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to give that as an example. Uh, to where here I'm loading these, I don't even know how many I made, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 models loading, and it's loading in a fraction of the time, uh, about 
one third, probably less than one third, then loading just 10 of those models into Blender. And I'm doing it in the web browser here in JavaScript, which is considered uh, by many to be a slow language. Now, I am not saying that you have to program in JavaScript or that doing the same thing in something like C would be better. Because if you did this in C, yeah, it would probably load better. But if you're loading 280 megabytes worth of files in C, it's gonna take longer if then loading 28 megabytes in almost any other language. So again, it's not about so much about the language you pick, but how you write your code. Uh, and again, let me uh, let me real quick go to Blender here and show you. I just copied these empties. So if you look, they all have a name called empty, uh, empty whatever, empty their number. Uh, but you could change this instead of empty. I could say tree.4. <clears throat> and then I could add a tree model in here. And when I loop through, instead of saying just find the empty, if the name is empty, I'll say, well, I'll create a new array called trees and I'll say, okay, if the name has tree, push it to the trees array and then loop through those positions as well. Just different ways of doing it. In fact, you could make one uh, loop like this and based on its name, clone a different model. Again, we're getting more in depth there, but same concept. You wouldn't have a hundred trees in your scene. And lots of times if you have a game editor for a particular game, their level editor is gonna do this. You might place 3D models in the level editor, in the level editor, uh, but then when you save that output, it, it hopefully isn't saving all those models to the scene. It's going to convert them to basically coordinates like this. Uh, so anyway, Thought I'd give that example. Again, you can uh, go, you can go to gitlab.com forward slash mailx1000. This project's called 3D Model Loading Examples. And you can also go, if you were to go to filmsbychris.com, we can go to software, scripts, click on 2020 and 3D Model Loading Examples. And you can run this right off my server from in Miami. Um, <coughs> Hopefully, uh, I have got plenty of bandwidth, so hopefully this 288 megabyte file doesn't eat up all my bandwidth. A lot of people start hitting it, I might have to get rid of that one. Uh, but uh, you can obviously run it locally by cloning it, or at least downloading it from GitLab. But if you want to test it out, you can click here, load those 10. Uh, I'm gonna stop that because that takes too long. But I can also load 100 here. And I'm not sure why, oh, there we go, okay. Took a little, a little bit of time that time. That's probably because I, I have multiple things open and I can hear my uh, processor spinning up, uh, the fan on my processor anyway. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, uh, the code I wrote here could definitely be improved, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to go from horrible code to halfway decent code. And of course, code can almost always be improved. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Also, you can go to my website and go to the support section. And if you want to donate to me through uh, PayPal, you can click on this donate button right here. You can become a supporter at uh, patreon.com. And then you can also go and see me on uh, uh, library, uh, LBRY. There'll be a link in the description to that. And there you can watch my videos and you can get uh, some cryptocurrency for watching my videos and you could tip me if you like my videos and that way you can tip me with no money out of your pocket so check that out link in the description as always I hope that you have a great day